Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryo of Magnetic Service. It is a sweet place here. In these evening hours, in this place called Melbourne, you see, I know where I am. There is there's no mystery here. Human beings have wished to elevate that which is God, that which is spirit, that which is innate, to a very high platform. Human beings have wished to put the energy that you call spirit in the clouds just a little separated from humanity and that's the safest thing for you it's safe because then when it comes time to pray to that divine entity which is in the sky you can be separate The idea that you might be together and one might be the other is confusing. It's also easier for you to claim that you are in touch with a higher power and that it lifts you up. Easier to be carried on the wings of a spiritual being into a place of co-creation and were you to claim that it might be inside. It's a sweet place here. You see, the truth is this. If indeed there is divinity in each of you, it means that the Creator and that which you pray to and that which you meditate on is always with you. And that everything you are and has happened this day is known. It means that as I sit in front of you, I know where I am and it's not a mystery. They don't have to wonder what you're up to <laughs> because I sit with you all the time. And this changes the way you think about spirit. And to some it is comfortable and others it's awkward. But just think. When you sit to meditate. When you decide to cross that bridge from your three dimensions to a, a multi-dimensional place. When you start to, to reveal to God what is on your mind, you can stop for a moment and know that whatever is on your mind is known to God now. We have told you in the past, advice, given you things to think about, the ways to pray, if you choose. And the best one still remains this, and that is to acknowledge the fact that the Spirit has been with you all day long. And no matter what the issues and no matter what the problems before you, they're all known by God. To reiterate them is repetitive. It doesn't even honor the belief that Spirit is with you all the time. So the best thing to do is to sit in in silence and if you're going to say anything at all it would be dear spirit show me what it is I need to know and it brings up the subject of tonight's teaching you know this is not going to be an endurance event the energy that is that is brought to you in all sweetness in this you call channeling doesn't have to be a long thing 
It can be poignant. It can be short. It can be to the point. But there are things I want to give you. There are things I want to tell you that you need to know. And they're going to enhance the magnificence of who you are. I'm going to reveal the breakout, that is to say the split that takes place when you arrive on the planet. The system that is here. The tools that you have because of it. The things that you intuitively feel that are real. All of these things hide from you. You've got to dig for them. You know that. Because it takes free choice. Intent that is pure. To ask the questions and go to that place where you cross the bridge. And discover what is inside. At some level, all of the major spiritual systems on the planet acknowledge this. And in three dimensions, some of them require promises, signatures, membership, acknowledgments, confessions. But it's all the same. Something has to happen where the human being says, I believe. And it is no different here, for this is the intuition you have when you arrive. I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to ask my partner to be slow and specific so that you will hear it correctly and understand it correctly and celebrate it correctly. <clears throat> Hard to believe, but the essence of you, which you call consciousness, is sacred. It is not manufactured through biology. It arrived in a sacred place, a sacred time given to humanity for sacredness and appropriateness and has remained that way from that day to this. And the human race has not had it any more than 100,000 years and only 50,000 in an active way of efficiency. It's new. When you take a look at the age of the earth as it was prepared for you, it's only in the last moment or so in history that this happened. New. And you massage it and you celebrate it and you work with it and you discover it. And now you sit here in front of me, a group of old souls. Let me speak now, before we begin the teaching, to those who are listening and reading, and they are not in your time frame. This is about as quantum as it can get, for we now speak to those whose potential are to be listening and reading, and I can see them. And as they listen and as they read, even though it's not today for them as it is for you, it's still in the now for me. And so I can address this to them and say, listen, dear one, this is for you. I may be in a very special part of the earth. I may be in a place where I look up in the sky and my partner sees an entire different set of stars. But the truth is the truth. And I know who you are as you listen, as you read. For well, this is sacred information and you know, you know what it is. And I know who you are as well. You are eternal, all of you. You always were and you always will be. And I take you back to a place you can't really remember. You're not equipped to remember it. You don't have the essence it's needed to remember it. Because that split away when you came. And that's what I want to speak of. I take you back. Oh, eternal one, you've always been with me. 
When you're on the other side of the veil, you are not singular. You don't have a name that is singular. When we say we sing your name in light, we sing, we sing a chorus of plurality. You are part of a collective, which is God. And in this collective, there are what we would call core soul energies that are not singular for they're all connected all the time. You're used to being connected. When you are a piece of God, you think like the collective. You think like the God eternal. You think like the creator. You have a consciousness that is always connected in love. It is thick. You hear the music playing. The music is the light of the universe. The interdimensionality that sparkles all around you that sings the magnificent chorus, a song that you will always recognize. Music is played in light. It's the best I can describe it. The best I can describe it. You're not singular. You're not alone. And it's beautiful. You were there when the earth was created and you knew what would happen and eventually you would participate in yet another planet of free choice in yet another scenario of what you call humanity has it happened before oh yes oh yes listen to me there is no beginning of you that is the magnificence that you need to know. You can't imagine it, for your bias is forward only and not backward. My partner mentioned it to you, you think you're forever, and you can say, I believe in the afterlife, and I go forever, but you can't go the other way. Your brain has a difficult time thinking that you always were. Why is that hard? If you can look in one direction and say you are forever, can't you simply turn around and look in the other direction and say forever? Do it. There is no such thing as a limitation of time. There is no such thing as, a, as an aging soul. For it is the essence of the Creator. It always is. It never changes. It always will be. And that's who you are. I'm with you at the wind of birth. A phrase which we've used before, it, it is a spiritual wind that blows from this side of the veil that you call earth into that which is interdimensional, almost like a portal. And you enter in that way. That's the best I can describe it. It's how it feels to us. And there you stand as the magnif magnificent being that you are, angelic. So for linear reasons of teaching only, I am now going to describe for you a way that you can understand linearly what happens. And for those of you who wonder of my partner's teaching of a quantum energy broken down into steps easy medium hard all of these things that is the that is the linearity for you of something that has no linearity it's a teaching method and we give it to my partner so you'll understand it and so we do it again now What happens when you're born? If you are a piece of God and you enter as biology, the moment of birth, will you acknowledge for a moment that you don't have everything that you did when you were a piece of God? <laughs> Something happens when you step into the wind of birth. 
something profound happens, a system happens. And you arrive as a human being that has an attribute where you don't really know who you are until you start examining. But let us look at this attribute of the human being for just a moment. Even before I describe the split, let's look at what happens. You arrive alone in 3D. Singular you are, which is very different from the way you were. Not connected. Something's missing, and you know it. I'll tell you something we've only told a few groups in the past. The infants are given a dispensation of grace. So that it is not too startling. So that it's not frightening. The infants in the first six months of life can see pieces and parts of the other side of the veil. They'll look into the corners and grin and smile and squeal with delight as they see the family and the colors that are interdimensional and the sacredness just to coddle them in the arms of God for a, for a few months to let them know it's okay. They're still taken care of. And every mother in the room knows this for they have seen it in their children. The joyful look into the corner of the room where there's seemingly nothing at all and the child is entranced by it and the mother looks there and all, all there is is nothing. <laughs> and now you know. All of this part of a system of love for the human being. Slowly it goes away. And as the human being develops a consciousness a maturity of mind that can think for itself, the first thing it does is to miss what it had. This starts to explain that which is loneliness. Loneliness for God. Loneliness for the family. Something is missing. Oh, you may be surrounded by brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers and friends and something is missing. When you're at your most aloneness by yourself, something is missing. And so humanity as a whole searches for the Creator. And it explains that which is organized and divine. It explains the various ladders of what my partner calls that you build to touch the face of God. That which is spiritual, that which is religious, that which is organized, that which is not organized. Most of the earth finds a way to touch the face of God. And maybe it is within the scope of your reality to think of the times when you were on your knees. And there is worship and there are altars and there are buildings. And there are words and masters and songs and whatever it takes to get back to where you were. Because you miss being connected. And now I'll show you why. There you stand, figuratively, metaphorically, as a piece of creation ready to be born yet again into a family of your own choice with their choice and your choice before you're ever born the system has you put on purpose in a place it's not a mystery you chose it oh well, there are those listening here and those reading here, perhaps even in the room here that would say, oh, now I know you're wrong, crying. I would never, ever have chosen that family. <laughs> uh, yes, you did. Yes, you did. And maybe, just maybe, you chose it so that it would always be different. Did you know that? What you have done with your family makes a mark on this planet. 
It changes their karmic attributes. It changes your karmic attributes. It changes the heredity that is karmic of who they choose in the future. Did you think about that? What you may see is only problems and drama and that which is difficult has created a vibration that will change what happens from now on in that karmic group. Perhaps you've stepped away from something and it's been difficult. Perhaps you've disassociated yourself with what you call something dark. Perhaps you feel you've released it and escaped it. And I'm going to tell you something. But what you have done is to heal it. And you don't even know it. You don't know how it works. You're so singular in your path that you can only see one thing at a time. You cannot even see the multiplicity of what your vibratory actions create in a future you can't imagine. Light worker, everything you do changes what happens next. The act of you sitting in the chair today changes what happens next. The act of listening to a recording or reading the words somewhere right now for you changes a vibration somewhere, somehow. The potentials of the planet change because you are looking at this, hearing this, attending this. There you are as a piece of God about to be born and you split. And it's profound. And I can't believe, as Cryon, how many times you've done this willingly. And this now explains why we wash your feet in love. Because I am looking at and, and being aware of humanity. Those who would listen to this and read this and attend this have gone through so much and it's just the beginning when you arrive what you give away willingly so that you can come to this planet for a few years I watch you do it I can't believe it the first thing that splits out from your magnificence is the largest chunk of divinity the divinity that knows who you are that celebrates the God the one that helps to sing the songs the one that's connected all the time and you call it your higher self others have called it the Holy Spirit but it's personal and it belongs to you and it splits out completely you arrive with it but it's interdimensional and you're not. Not at the conscious level. You may be quantum in DNA, but you're not consciously aware that there is something that is you in you, which is God. That comes later. I speak to those who know this, who actively seek out the higher self. But did you know it's part of you? Did you know that it belongs with you? This starts to explain this which we have said before that when you start pushing on the door and you start questioning who you are, is there something bigger, you ask? Is there a system, you ask? You sit in meditation and you say, Dear Spirit, show me what I need to know. And you're overcome, perhaps, with the emotion of love. It's because on the other side of that door, there's a piece of you that is enormous, that has your name, that has its hand out, saying, take it, connect, take it. You don't have to beg to be a connection to spirit. You don't have to suffer. Dear one, because that is you who you're asking 
to connect to. The first thing that happens, that which is sacred, that which is angelic, the angel you splits out. So in a linear way, you might say that on your way from that which you consider heaven to that which you consider the, the birthplace, all of this happens instantaneously. And the higher self splits out. Now the linear human being is going to say, well, cry on that's interesting. Where does it go? And the answer is yes. Because there is no where, human being, in a quantum state. It is that it is. Always with you, no matter what, and yet always with God, no matter what. I ought to give you comfort. It's not in the clouds, dear ones. It vibrates at a higher level. It's higher. It's yourself. And that's just one of three splits which we wish to describe tonight. And the others, hmm, unbelievable to you. If we were to title tonight's message, it would be the plurality of the human spirit. The message has been given in pieces and parts. Even my partner would teach it. But this channel will give its complexity. The next thing that splits out from you is what we will call your helper set. That which when you come to the earth, you linearize as your guides and angels that belong to you. You're not going to like this part. <laughs> because guides, angels and helpers are supposed to know more than you do. Not really. Not really. They are the sacred parts of you that split out that appear to be multiples. Guides. How many do you have? Well, you say you have three, you have four. Then there's that classic part of you when you change vibratory rate. When the guides leave and others come, come in. That's your perception. Never understanding that they have always been the same because they're part of you. Your angels, your guides are you. Appearing to you in linearity as helpers. The joke is this. Every time you change vibration, you think they leave and then come back new as others. And they don't. What happens is as you change your vibration, you see them in a different light, dear ones. They're not someone else now. They're you. Magnificent. Mm. Humans want their guides to be someone else. And they're not. And this helps to explain certain kinds of feelings that you have. Because you miss them. If you feel they retreat, you miss them. Not only that, you go into depression if they're not there. Did you know that? And here's the mystery. Is that humanity in general will walk an entire lifetime and never engage them. And they'll be there the whole time. Quiet they are until you speak, until you ask. And you'll say, well, what do they do? <laughs> yes. Let me give you a hint. They exist in your Merkaba field. That's the field of DNA that we have discussed. They exist there. Approximately eight meters wide. That's where they are. If you're going to give a location, that's where they are. And they're responsible first and foremost for intuition. That's what they do. That's the map that helps you to know to turn left or right. When it's time, where to move in synchronicity. It's the thing that brought you here. 
For those of you sitting in the chairs in front of me, that is what brought you here. The desire that you would have to sit before Cryon, it's larger than you think. The thing that brought you here. Your guides, what you call your angels, necessary they are in your auric field, in your Merkaba field, in your DNA field, they belong there. They never leave. But when you change vibration due to an epiphany, a realization, it appears as though they disappear for a moment because you are changing. Let me tell you something in history that you'll relate to. In this culture, I reveal this. It was approximately sundown in the Middle East about 2,000 years ago. And the master of love hangs on that piece of wood that he is nailed to. He is in the process seemingly of dying. He's about to go through a magnificent shift. And in the process, those who are around him look at him and they hear him make a statement. Here's the man who said, I am the son of God, and so are you. Here is the man who showed you what 100% efficient DNA does. Here is a human being who has taken on mastery. Here is a metaphysical master who showed you what you can do when you contact your higher self. Here's the one responsible in your culture for mastery and you see it and what did he say and what was reported in that hour when he was about to shift his energy he looks to heaven and he says why have you forsaken me where have you gone and did you ever wonder why such a thing could be said by the master of love someone so connected to his higher self that, that he had the essence of the Creator as he walked from place to place and did the miracles he did to show you what you could do. Why would he say that? What was going on? What had happened? Did anything go wrong? Now you know. For in that brief moment when he was shifting his energy it appeared that all that he was left him and he felt alone for the first time in his life and it all came back dear one it all came back now you know these are your guides and your angels and they're with you for life and that's number two the third one is the hardest thing I've asked my partner to teach it requires a quantum thinking human being and you don't think that way and so we try to create a dispensation of understanding that you would grasp a concept which is really out of the purview of your ability to grasp <laughs> but we do it anyway you have an entourage that is you. Now the word entourage would lead you to believe that there are many. And it's not entities, it's energies. And it's the energies of you with others. Difficult to grasp, but this is part of the split. It is the third part of three. If you will look at spirituality, if you will look at systems, there's also, there is so much evidence of the issue of the three, the three in one. Look for it, it's everywhere. And these are the three splits. This entourage stays on my side of the veil. The peace of God that you are, part of you stays here. What does it do? That's always the question of the human being. Everything has to do something. <laughs> do you realize that every process that you look at, 
those in this room on the breaks will go into the other the other hallway and there they will find energy work they will find stones with energy they will find glass with energy they will find processes and you will look at it and go to the table and your question is always the same is it not what does it do how linear of you so I will tell you what it does <laughs> before I can explain this properly I will put it into a puzzle and then we'll solve the puzzle by answering what do they do here is the puzzle go slowly my partner for I wish to set this up for you linearly logically there are those listening and reading and in this room that believe their ability to manifest their own reality they have dropped their karmic imprint they hold the rudder of their life firmly they move from place to place using their intuition they have gotten somewhat accustomed to the fact that synchronicity happens only at the last possible moment which humans don't like but they trust and they find themselves moving through life meeting those they should meet going the places they should go and not being upset that it doesn't work exactly the way they want and that is manifestation they create their own reality where they live who they meet the family the partnerships the jobs all of the things that humans have to walk through paying the rent hmm. and they manifest it and it is a tool that we have always described they create their own joy they move easily in and out of places sometimes in a stair-step manner one place leading to another getting to a place where they can do the most good on the on the earth and yet manifest the joy of comfort while they're there hmm. now with that in mind and the logic of that in place I will ask you an ethical spiritual question unless you're on a desert island do you understand dear human beings that if you co-create for yourself and manifest your own reality that you are affecting all the human beings around you in your situation did you ever think of that so as you push forward perhaps into a new place to live synchronistically with others or into a new position or a job or a partnership or a new business or anything that you feel you've manifested you affect another human being here is the ethical question I ask you that is spiritual what gives you the right to steamroll your manifestation over them perhaps you didn't think of that you know why you didn't think of that because it is a win-win situation when it occurs no one has to lose for you to win that is a human attribute of singularity that's a bias and so you don't think that you're steamrolling over someone else's will but what if you were Now I'm going to answer this and this is difficult on the other side of the veil is this entourage of energy that splits out for every single human being on the planet and stays on my side of the veil think of it for a moment as a soup of potentials of every human on earth that is cooperative that knows what is going on now certain human beings awaken with manifestation abilities because they are aware and develop them that might be you who are listening or reading 
It doesn't make you any better than any other human being. It just means that you have searched and found that which is vibrationally high, that which has always been there, that which you wish to connect with and puts you in a place where you can co-create for humanity. And you think you're doing it for yourself. Are you getting this picture? Every time you change your own reality, something happens with the rest of the entourage. It is around you cooperating. Even the human beings who have not awakened have an awakened entourage on the other side of the veil who know what you're doing and are cooperating with it. Therefore, there is no ethical question of you steamrolling anything over anything. How singular, how biased. For in a quantum state, all is connected. What you're doing is manifesting for the others as well. When you put yourself into a new position, a new place, do you understand you spread light there? You think that was just you who put yourself there? There is a system afoot that is so huge. All that is that has split out sits on the other side of the veil looking at what you're trying to do creating the synchronicity that you will allow all together they are helping you do what you're doing my partner makes fun of this sometimes he asks you to think of the parking angel that energy which seems to, to tell you when to turn right or left in a parking place and you arrive just in time to take the place of someone who leaves. That is it in its most simple form. Did anybody lose when you did that? Not really. Ah, there's the linear thinking human being, that intellectual who says, wait a minute, crying, what about all those who didn't get that parking place? They lost. The question has been asked many times, what would happen if everyone looking for a parking place had the same parking angel? <laughs> and I'm going to give you the answer to that. I'm going to tell you, what would happen if everyone had the ability to co-create? I'm going to give you the answer to this. And I want you to listen. Here it is. Peace on earth. That's what would happen. Are you starting to understand? You're a minority. And you will always be a minority. There'll never be a time when all of Earth will awaken and know what you know. That's not the potential. It never was the potential. Less than one half of one percent of humanity has to awaken and do what you're doing for the rest of them. And the entourages that, that are cooperating with you to create peace on Earth. But you become the ones that hold the light. Not every, not every ship has its own lighthouse, you see. Clusters of ships will be guided into the safe harbor by one strong lighthouse that keeps its light going. Do you understand? How many lighthouses are there and how many ships are there? Do you get the point? You're the lighthouse. We told you that 20 years ago. Some have used it as a, as a symbol for the cry on work. It was a wonderful metaphor. It still is. And that's the split. That's the teaching of today. I don't want to complicate it by giving you anything more that would disturb this. So for this, so we close. I want you to think about this. Yesterday, in your time, we told you about Elijah. We told you what he did, that Elisha watched him actually ascend, not die, but ascend. And you watched the process. As Elijah walked into the field, Elisha said, He's, he, he has a vehicle around him. He's riding a chariot of light. I can't look at it, it's too bright. He turned into a, a, an amazing, huge, bright light. And, 
and ascend it? Now I will tell you what that was. That is Elijah recombining the three parts. <laughs> the entourage, the angelic helpers, and the higher self. And for a moment you got to see one human being's full capacity. On purpose this was given so that those who would analyze it would tell you what it was. It wasn't God coming down to get him. It was the God in him showing itself to you. Hmm? And each of you had that. Each of you have that. Listen to me. Each of you have that. And I know this. For I was there when the split occurred. There's profundity here. I have watched humans for eons. I've looked in the eyes, metaphorically, of those who I love who are part of the, the God essence as I am, who are about to come in the earth for three months, knowing full well the potential that they would die as a child. And the system was a setup, not predestination, but a predisposition. That is to say, a potential only, depending upon what happened next. But a potential of karma that was so strong, that most of the time, that's what happened. And you say, why would they do that? The death of a child sometimes changes a family forever. Absolutely forever. Sometimes it's so debilitating it takes them to zero. It beats up their emotion to zero. It makes them grovel on the floor and cry out to God. Sometimes in anger, sometimes in desperation, always in sorrow. And that's where they find the higher self. And that's where they start a whole new life. And that is where they, they create light that wasn't there before. And their rest of their lives, they change the very dirt of the earth they walk on. Because they found spirit. All because a human being said, I'll do it. I'll come in and do that. parents don't realize is so often they come right back in <laughs> if the parents will allow it as another child same soul they show up and say I'm back parents don't see that but that is the system and that is the process It is profound and it is the glue of love that holds all of these things together so that you can create light on this planet in so many ways, in so many directions. But the truth is this, a split occurs and you spend all of your life wishing to recon reconnect. And maybe that brought you here. So the two of us, if I can use that singularity, could have this little talk. Have I been talking to you today? Oh, yes. <laughs> the listener, the reader, the ones who sit in the chairs in this place. You needed to hear it. So that when you stand from your chair and you leave and you decide to, to be alone for a little bit, you could ask that question, is that really true? Am I that magnificent? Am I surrounded with this kind of energy, the tools of co-creation? Can I really show this kind of light to the earth? And the answer is yes. And yes. And yes. Given in love this day. And so it is.